guys, what's up? Welcome or welcome back to the channel. It's Kanisha Lachey. So in today's video, I'm going to be doing a Q&A of my birth experience. So if y'all interested in that, then please continue to watch. Before you do, let me just say to all my new subscribers, hey, 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 I'm so happy y'all decided to join me on this journey. This is definitely a new journey for me. Motherhood, this is my first baby. So I'm probably more than likely is going to do a lot of mommy type of content, baby content, day in the life type stuff. So if y'all enjoy that type of stuff, please make sure you subscribe to the channel if you have it. Um, if you have, just give me a thumbs up to let me know that you want to see that type of content. Um, make sure you hit that post notification bell so you don't miss a call from me. And let's get right into this video. I chose a home birth because I wanted to be in the comfort of my own home. I knew what my body is capable of and I trusted my body, I trusted God, I trusted my midwife. You know, I really wanted to make sure that I had a relationship with my care provider and not just an in and out type thing. Also, I just feel like so many times when black women go into the hospital to have babies and stuff, I feel like their voices aren't heard um, and are overlooked. I didn't want that to be my story. Another reason, I just really wanted to have control. Well, I was gonna say I wanted to have control over my birth, but sometimes you can't, you don't have control because birth is so unexpected. But yeah, I, I just wanted to have control to get up and go as I please, as far as it's laboring and just moving around. And I also just had a really strong desire to birth without any medication. One thing about me, I'm not that big on taking medication. I just don't I don't care for it at all like I've never been the type to just just take medication you know for anything like sometimes I just kind of like let my body run its course and you know go from there and I just feel like so many times when women go into hospitals it, it can be like any little thing and I feel like so many women always have to get emergency c-sections when they don't need to so like if you guys see my birth video if you haven't here it is right here but as y'all know, like I labored for five hours just trying to, you know, push her out. If I was in a hospital, that would have easily turned into an emergency C-section because the nurses probably would have freaked out. Like, oh my God, her heart rate's dropping, this and that and that. I feel like they go into like panic mode or something like that. I don't know, but I just feel like so many times women get emergency C-sections when they don't need to. And also like, getting induced early and things like that i didn't want that like i wanted my body to naturally go into labor and not you know be influenced by medication that they might put me on or whatever how they induce women and i, I just really wanted everything to kind of happen on its own and just really trust my body and let my body do its own thing so and it's so crazy but probably like a couple of years ago like two years ago i started following a lot of like home birth natural birth pages on instagram and i was like i really want to try it i want to do it and i think that also kind of motivated me to really want to try a home birth and i'm so happy i did because literally everything that i wanted i got in this birth so so i found my midwife through YouTube. Dexter and I, when we first found out we were expecting, we we already knew that we wanted to do, well, I wanted to do a home birth. So I started looking up like Dallas home births. I had seen this birthing center called Origins. I was watching some of their um, birthing videos or whatever. And then like on the side, like the suggested videos, I had seen my midwife video. And this was just her and her two other um, partners and they were just talking about their birth center and i see my midwife i love the way her energy was i loved her smile i loved how detailed she was in explaining things and also i love the fact that she genuinely seemed like she cared about her clients she cared about her work and she genuinely seemed so happy to be a midwife and she loved it so much i was like oh my god like i really want her to be my midwife after that i had went to her website and i just literally read like each page on her website and then after that i had went to her instagram page and just kind of y'all know how y'all do just when y'all creeping on people instagram pages just to kind of find out a little bit more about them that's basically what i had did 
and then from there i believe like the next day i had emailed her and just you know explained to her that i wanted her to be my midwife before i finally decided on her though i did interview one other lady but i ultimately went with my midwife so that's how i found my midwife and then when i met her she welcomed us with elephant arms she was so nice she was always smiling and I feel like that was like the best decision I made in my birth um, and I'm just so happy so yeah okay so my photographer I found her through Instagram and I actually started following her maybe like two years ago and I remember just I don't even know how I stumbled across her page but and I was just amazed I was so amazed at her work and the quality of her work and how she tells like the birth stories and the pictures look so so nice and the videos looks really nice as well and i remember commenting on one of her pictures i was like i don't know when i'm gonna have a baby but whenever i have a baby you gotta be my photographer and i spoke that into existence and so so happy with that decision as well and she is just phenomenal so i found padula through my photographer page because they work together and then i went on her page the doula page and I loved everything that I've seen about her. Like, she looked like she was so caring. She looked like she gives like great support at the birth and she seemed like she was very knowledgeable and everything. Um, however, that was not the experience I got from her, but I'm not gonna get too much into that. But yeah, so with that, I would say my tip for finding like your care providers, your doulas and things like that, I would definitely say make sure you do your research, do your due diligence in reaching out to people, like interviewing people. Um, it don't matter if you interview two people, three, four, five, it don't matter, interview people. Also, I would say look up some reviews if you can slide into some people's dms if you can just to make sure that that person would be the best for you honestly i feel like dexter was kind of like my duel throughout the whole labor and process because he was literally there the whole time by my side and everything so that's that <laughs> So Dexter, I asked him this question and he was like, he just have, like he had respect for me, but he have even more respect for me. Um, just seeing that whole birthing process, like actually the actual birth of our baby girl, he was like, you was a straight G, like you did that. And for me, I would just say, I know like now, like, I mean, I always knew, but like now I knew Dexter got our back, like me and baby girl back, like no matter what, no matter who he may feel uncomfortable because again i'm not gonna get too much into it but like with our doula he was on it like he was calling her like hey you need to call my wife this and that and i honestly he just made me feel like so protected with him during this experience and he was just all around a really really good husband <laughs> Okay, so I'm not a midwife or anything like that, no type of care provider, but basically with my midwife, what she did for me is she sent me like a list of questions because I just thought, okay, I wanna do a homework, I'm gonna do this homework, but no, it's like a list of questions that I had to answer um, in order to be considered for a home birth. So basically you'll be considered a candidate if you are a woman in good health conditions and you are a low risk pregnancy so basically you don't have any chronic medical conditions or anything however if you are a high risk pregnancy then your care provider will discuss that with you and then they'll just let you know your options and all of that stuff okay so cost Honestly, with the cost, it really just depends on your midwife and it also depends on your doula. And also, I feel like it has a lot to deal with that midwife experience or that doula experience. So if you get somebody that, you know, only been a doula or midwife for a year or so, they may not be as high as, as a doula who's been doing it for 11 years. So I feel like stuff like that you need to take into consideration as well when you are choosing your care provider. So you just kind of have to go what's best for you and your family and what you know what's feasible for you guys and y'all budget and just kind of like go from there but also i feel like too like if you feel so strong about somebody like a midwife 
um, or a doula, but they may be a little bit out of your budget. When you are planning your baby registry, put that on your baby registry as a gift. Like you can start like a fund account where people can add to that and help you pay for that. Insurance, our insurance didn't cover our birth. Everything we paid was out of pocket. However, I know some people, insurance companies do pay for certain parts of a home birth. Like I know I have a friend who's looking into doing a home birth and she has said that their insurance covers, I believe she said they cover the birth and center, but not the mid, not the midwife. But always just check your insurance because you never know what they cover, what they don't cover. Literally anything helps. So what's the doula versus a midwife? Because I got that question a lot during my pregnancy, like for my family and friends and things like that. So think of your midwife as your doctor. They are your care provider. So she's gonna be the person that actually delivers your baby. So you're gonna go to her for your checkups. If you need any blood work done, they basically take care of the pregnancy, the newborn exams, and also a little bit of postpartum, just to see how you're doing, like, you know, after you deliver the baby and everything. And then they can also refer you to, like, pelvic floor therapy, which my midwife did, chiropractor, um, and also the way I got my ultrasounds, because people ask me that, how I got my ultrasounds. So basically my midwife just referred me to someone who she works with, who do like ultrasounds and everything. And then she send my information over to my midwife and they kind of like go from there. So your doula is just a trained professional who's gonna help you through your pregnancy and laboring process. They do different techniques to kind of help alleviate some pains or discomfort that you may experience during labor. They can reassure you when you feel like you, you, can, you can't do it anymore or down yourself. They can really encourage you and things like that. But also, I would say, because Dexter was kind of like my doula during my laboring he was so 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 good he was literally there the whole time rubbing my back and all of that stuff and just you know encouraging me and telling me you can do it you got this all of that but if you have a husband if you have a boyfriend a girlfriend a friend that's like super super supportive of your decisions and of this experience that you are going to embark on i would say have them there too have people that's going to be super supportive because that's all you want that's all you really want during this this process is people that support you people that's there for you and love you and things like that so emergencies would be anything that your midwife could not perform or cannot do is certain protocols that they follow and everything and take them to the hospital if they can't do it but basically in case of an emergency you will get taken to the hospital and your midwife and your doula they'll just follow you along if you have either one of them but um they'll just come with you until you know you have your bed and then afterwards they'll probably like go home and come see you like the next day that's what i think they would do but like i said i don't know because I didn't have that experience, um, but I'm pretty sure it'll be something like that. With my midwife, I have a postpartum visit, the two week visit, and also the six week visit. And my six week visit with my midwife is next week. And I'm so sad because it's the last time I'm gonna see her until I have another baby or something. <laughs> I'm so sad because I'm gonna miss her so much. But after this six week appointment, then I'll make an appointment to a pediatrician and then we'll just kind of like go from there with my pediatrician. So honestly, I just feel like this is preference, birthing at home versus birthing at a birthing center. For us, the reason we didn't choose the birthing center, two things, it was the extra fee. I really just wanted to be in the comfort of my own home. I like my space. We have a hospital down the road if we needed that. The birthing center was pretty far from us. It was like 30-ish, 35-ish minutes from us. And so the way I was handling labor, I feel like, 
I don't know if we would have made it to the birth center if we chose a birth center because the way I was dilating so quickly, you know, I was managing them pretty well. I don't know if we would have made it. <laughs> so I'm happy we birthed at home. But so yeah, some people choose a birthing center because they maybe feel like, you know, their house isn't up to par to do a home birth. Some people might just feel more confident in doing a birth at a birthing center. I don't know, because I really didn't consider it. I feel like people just have their own reasons why they will choose a, you know, to birth at their own place versus the birthing center. Some people might feel more like they have everything that they need there, but honestly, like my midwife, I, I felt safe with her. She literally broke everything that she would need for the birth, so I never once really kind of doubted it or like, no, I really need to do it at the birth center. No. I never felt scared, I never felt nervous at all going into the labor. I felt a really sense of calm, peace, I was excited. I think I was just excited not knowing what was really gonna happen and just really trusting my body and really trusting God and just, like when I tell y'all I pray every single day over my birth before like it was time for the day, like I pray every day about the people that was gonna be attached to this birth, my baby, my husband, my body, my um, environment. I pray every day about this. So I just, I don't know, I just felt the sense of peace. So no, I wasn't scared, I wasn't nervous. And I think I remained calm because naturally I'm pretty a calm person. I don't really like worry that much. I don't know, I'm just super like laid back, really chill. So I think naturally that maybe has something to do with it too. And just like my, my affirmations and my hypnobirthing, just really listening to some of those tracks before the actual birth had taken place really, really helped. And just, like I said, just allow my body to do what it's gonna do. So if you go into any situation already expecting the worst already, being fearful and all that stuff. Nine out of 10, that is gonna be your experience. So I just kinda like, just let it, let this whole experience just kinda do what it was gonna do. And just dealt with each emotion, each surge as it came in. With this whole birth, it was definitely, I was not in control. And I'm so used to being in control of everything. So I think just let everything happen how it's supposed to happen, how you have to look at it, I guess. So this is funny because I asked my midwife, I was like, what should I wear? She was like, nothing. Some people don't wear anything. So for me, um, I just had on a sports bra and I didn't have on any underwear and I just had on this cute little gown from Target and that was it. Some people wear like the little skirts that you can wear. It's kind of like the, um, the skirts that people wear when they go swimming. Um, if you don't want to be like too exposed, some people just wear a bra, some people wear a bralette. Um, it just depends on whatever you're comfortable in. I even seen like some birth vlogs like on YouTube where the lady was like fully naked. So honestly too, like when you get to that point, like it's not gonna even matter to be honest. Like it's all this stuff that we're thinking about beforehand, but like when you get in that moment, like like I was taking my gown on and off, on and off because I was getting hot, cold, hot, cold, hot, cold. And I did not care. Like I didn't care that my booty was out. I didn't care that my vagina was out. Like, you don't care. <laughs> you don't care. I didn't care. I just feel like these women be around this all the time. It don't phase them. So, whatever. But if you're a very modest person, then, you know, maybe get the little skirt that your midwife can kind of like go under and see everything and all that. And you'll be fine. My midwife sent me a list of supplies and I basically just went off of that. Anything that I didn't have, I just went to Walmart and picked it up. So towels, washcloths, sheets, a mattress cover. So basically as y'all seen in my birth vlog, I just used a shower curtain as my mattress cover and that worked fine. Baby diapers, wipes, pre-washed baby blankets, candles, um, incense, aromatherapy, that's basically just to kind of set the mood, you know, get you in your groove and all of that. Um, music, camera, video. Of course, I had to have my camera because I had to let y'all see this experience. A heating pad, an exercise ball, snacks, like nutritious snacks. So um, Dexter went and got like some trail mix and things like that for me. Water, of course, and liquid IVs to really keep you hydrated because you definitely need to be hydrated during this process. Honestly, 
let me tell y'all with postpartum the only thing that i felt like that i used and that i actually kind of like benefit from was the the disposable underwear definitely the passive was helped so much it felt so good to have that down there oh my god it felt so good the dermaplast spray to numb everything because that definitely helped the preliminal spray for the vagina as well and the sanitary pad oh in a peri bottle too the freedom on the phone i didn't use that i had bought that i think i used it once and the freedom on the witch hazel liners i bought one of those as well and i only used it maybe like a couple times it just felt too much down there it was just too uncomfortable i don't know it just didn't feel good to me that's pretty much what i used during my postpartum So I found all my affirmations pretty much through my hypnobirthing class, Google, other people's birthing blogs that I watched, affirmation cards that I see online. I was going to purchase some birthing affirmation cards, but I was like, I can just make my own. So that's pretty much what I did. I just hyped it up on a computer, put a cute little flower picture up there and cut them up, laminated them and called it a day. Yes, I did pack a hospital bag. If y'all see my nesting video, I'll link it right here. But I did pack a hospital bag. Uh, the dude was like, just pack one just in case. Um, and thank God we didn't need it. And y'all know what's crazy. I didn't even think about like the hospital bag the day. I was like, okay, let me just put this hospital bag or let me tell them where the hospital bag is just in case. I didn't even, my mind didn't even go there at all. So yeah, I packed one just in case. I packed one for myself and one for Yana and just kind of like threw it in the back of the closet and kind of forgot about it. Well, a couple things. So one thing I would say is when you decide if you want to do a home birth, I feel like I didn't talk that much about it because the initial reaction I got from it from family members and friends, I was just like, I don't even want to talk about it because people are already negative. People are very close-minded. And I feel like with this, it's natural like is nothing to be afraid of and sometimes people are so fearful and so afraid that they put their fears and anxiety on you and you start to feel that way as well um so i was like you know what i'm not gonna even really speak that much about it and it's sad because this was definitely an exciting time and i felt like i kind of like couldn't share as much because i really didn't want to hear other people and what they had to say about it because when i did they were like i don't think you can do it you ain't gonna be able to handle that pain if it's too painful go to the hospital get some medicine blah blah blah, blah. I'm like bro i'm gonna be okay like i'm not gonna die another thing is if it's somebody on your birth team that you guys aren't vibing like you thought you would don't be afraid to let that person go i mean try to talk it out try to work it out if it don't work out just let it go because it's not gonna get better at all as much as you think it is it's not and it's really gonna show up during your actual labor and birth it's gonna show up on that day and it's gonna show up like you can tell that like y'all don't have any type of connection even if you spent like money and everything you know on that person it, just take the L basically just take the L because it's nothing worse than having somebody on your team that's not really for you or don't really care or not really showing that they care so just let that person go take the L if you can afford to get somebody else then you know do it but don't hold on to somebody because you know well I pay for them so they gonna have to come no just no just let them go another thing is with this experience be okay with not knowing every single thing about your birth like the normal things like you know your doctor doing um, a lot of cervical checks and with this you really don't do that many cervical checks unless you ask your midwife if she can perform one but other than that sometimes they don't even perform them until like the very 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 end this is definitely a holistic approach to birth and it's really just letting your body do its own thing. And if everything is okay, like your baby's okay, it's nothing wrong. It's like no need to worry. It's no need to stress. So you guys, I thank y'all so much for watching this video. I hope y'all enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. And until next time, I'll see y'all my next upload. Bye y'all.